Today I'm gonna show you how I took my air fryer to a complete new level. And this is our third episode of I Cooked Every Meat. Of course, we started off with a toaster oven and every single meat I cooked was absolutely perfection. I mean, to say that this is mouthwatering is just an understatement. Then we moved right into a smoker and to say that those come out juicy is just basically unfair. I mean, take a look at that. It is the definition of juicy meat. And what I really wanna know is to find out which one works and which one just don't. My goal is to give every meat 100% to make sure every single one of them come out perfect. This is I cook every meat with an air fryer. So let's do it. And we're gonna start off with a beautiful ribeye steak. As many chefs will tell you, the ribeye is one of the most flavorful steaks there is. And this one is one and a half inches thick. And as you can see, this is a prime steak. And you're able to tell that because of this wonderful marbling. Always look for a well marbled steak. I know for a fact my air fryer does not get over 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And to me, the best thing there is in a steak is a crust. And to be able to form a crust, you must avoid moisture. And one of the great ways to do that and also season your steak all the way through is to do something called dry brine. And that is exactly what I'm doing right here. By seasoning the steak with salt and putting on my refrigerator to dry brine, it will accomplish both things. And I'm hoping that this method will work perfect for the air fryer. So after adding the salt all the way through, all there's left to do is to put it on a cooling rack so that it can rest on my refrigerator overnight. And the very next day, this is what it looks looks like. The dark coloration is a sign that the dry brine worked perfectly and that is exactly what you're looking for. The next thing to do is to add whatever other seasoning you like. My usual and what I always recommend is freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder. To me that's the perfect way to season a steak. But there's one other ingredient that I really enjoy and that is smoke. And there's no way you can produce that with an air fryer. So to compensate that and add more flavor I threw in a little bit of smoked paprika and onion powder. That should make a very flavorful steak. I set my air fryer to the highest setting which was 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And as for time, I gave it at 8 minutes. I threw my steak in and let the air fryer do its thing. As it was cooking, I decided to make a simple compound butter. And I started off with room temperature butter, garlic paste, dry parsley, and a little bit of shallots. Now all there's left to do is to mix it well and your compound butter is done. And by that time, my steak was done, which I was aiming for an internal temperature of 135 degrees Fahrenheit. And as you can see, this is what I was left with. I mean, you can clearly see that it's missing one thing and that is a crust. I really wish I could just grab my flamethrower and just go to town like there's no tomorrow on this beautiful steak. But hey, 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 this is an air fry episode. Let's not get carried away. But one thing that is coming out of this steak is a wonderful smell. But the crust needs some work. And as you can see here, the edge of the cap actually got a little bit overcooked, but it has a nice crust. As my steak was resting, I threw in the compound butter. You want to make sure you spread it all the way through and most important, let the butter do its thing. Once it was rested for 10 minutes, it was time to carve. And I started by removing the cap and taking my first slice and when I did, check that out. I mean it does have an overcooked gray band but the medium is perfection. What do you think? If you think it's overcooked it's interesting because I made a poll on my Instagram and 59% of people say that it was cooked perfectly. And as you can see one thing I can say is that it's a juicy steak. Regardless if you like the gray band or not we can all agree to that. And as far as the cap goes this is what it looks like. As expected the edges are completely overcooked but hey there's still a little bit of pink in there which I do like. And as I grab my first piece to take a bite, this is what it looks like. And nothing is more important than the taste. And I mean, let me tell you something, this is not bad. It is a very flavorful steak because of all the spices. It's still quite juicy and it does taste great. Can it taste better? Sure it can. Let me grab my flamethrower and you'll see what ha Well, let's get back to normal. No flamethrower on this episode. But with all seriousness, if you are in a hurry and you just want to throw it in and forget about it, this is not bad. I mean, the result speaks for itself. And especially if you only have an air fryer to cook your meat, you will be happy with this. Moving on to the next one is going to be a beautiful pork tomahawk. And this one is going to be real good. If you are unfamiliar with it, let me explain. It is basically a 2 inches thick pork chop with a bone. It is completely French which means to clean out the bone. And if there's one thing that this cut does is make an impression. In order not to waste any seasoning, I like to put it on a steak plate. This allows me to reuse the seasoning that just falls off. And talking about that, I started with coarse salt, followed by black pepper, garlic powder, smoked paprika, onion powder, and to finish it off and give a nice kick, chipotle powder. Now all there's left to do is to rub it well and make sure every single edge is coated. And as you can see, by the time I was done, I have a perfectly seasoned tomahawk. To ensure that my fat will render and get nice and crispy, I decided to score it. The only thing you want to avoid is to cut all the way through the meat. Now since we had a problem with the crust, I decided to do something different. This is a cast iron plate that I normally use for grilling, and it is fantastic. 
and as we all know, cast iron really holds its heat. So I threw it in my air fryer and set it for 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. And I let that thing preheat and get as hot as possible. My hope is that it will give me a wonderful crust. Once it was preheated, I took it out and here it is. Oh yeah, I think this is gonna work. I set the air fryer to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and 12 minutes. Threw the tomahawk in there and let it cook. As it was cooking, I decided to make a sweet garlic sauce to go along with it. And this one is so good that it can go along with many other meats. I started by melting one tablespoon of butter. Threw in three cloves of minced garlic and let it cook. You don't want to cook it all the way through as soon as you're smelling some aromatics. Throw in one tablespoon of white vinegar, followed by a teaspoon of fish sauce and four tablespoons of honey. Mix everything well and keep it under medium low heat. You're basically trying to get the moisture out as much as possible. This allows your sauce to thicken in and produces an incredible flavor. Keep in mind that if it gets too thick, you can always add a little bit more water. But once you're happy with the consistency, your sauce is done. As you can see, it's almost like caramel and a wonderful sauce to go along with pork and seafood. And once the sauce was done, so was the tomahawk. It had reached an internal temperature of 145 degrees Fahrenheit. And let me tell you something, that looks pretty good. And this is looking so good that I want to try it without the sauce first. And as I took the bone out and went for my first slice, this is what it looks like. If that's not perfectly cooked pork, I don't know what is. Exactly the way I like it. And as I went for my first bite, whoa, that is phenomenal. I'll let you hear the actual audio. Mm, that's amazing. That is what an air fryer was made to do. As you can see, sometimes I get a little carried away because I'll tell you one thing, it tasted perfect juicy to the max and absolutely delicious. But we still got the sauce to give it a try. And as I threw in my sauce, I mean, come on, how is that not gonna be amazing? And as I went in for my first bite with the sauce, oh, I mean, this sauce is so good that I had to go in for way more. I'm telling you, be careful with the sauce. If there's one thing I can recommend you doing on this video is to give this one a try. Making this pork tomahawk on an air fryer was absolutely perfection and something that I will always be doing moving forward. If there's one thing we all love is a nice juicy cheeseburger and making it on the grill is perfection every single time. I mean, I've made some incredible burgers, even some crazy deep fried ones, which was absolutely fantastic. And if there's one test that I'm really looking for is to cook a cheeseburger on the air fryer. And we start off with the buns. These are brioche buns and I think it's perfect for any cheeseburger. If you need a recipe, make sure you check out Guga's buns. I've already made a video on it and they are fantastic. Now, of course, the first thing we gotta do when making good cheeseburger is to toast the buns. So I threw them in the air fryer at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for four minutes. And once I took it out, yes, that's what I'm talking about. And as you can see, every single edge is toasted to perfection. Now let's talk about beef. I like to grind my own beef. That allows me to cook my burgers exactly the way I want it. But if you are buying your own ground beef, you should always cook it all the way through. Usually I just smash them directly on the grill. But since we're gonna be using the air fryer, I gotta get creative. And for that, you can use anything you like. I like my burgers extra smashed. And as you can see, that's exactly what I did right here. Even though it looks humongous now, keep in mind that it will shrink. To season it, I kept it pretty simple. I only added salt and pepper, nothing else. Threw them in the air fryer container and made sure to season both sides. Set my air fryer to 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 6 minutes. Pushed in the burger patties and let it cook. As it was cooking, I decided to make an easy and simple sauce. And I started with one part mayo, one part ketchup, half part mustard, and as much sweet relish as you like. Mix it all well and your sauce is done. This is an easy, simple sauce that goes along with many cheeseburgers. Once 5 minutes was up, I pull out my burgers. And as you can see, they are almost fully cooked. Threw in the good old American cheese and let it melt. After exactly 1 minute, it, it was time for the assembly. The first patty followed by the second one. And of course, to finish it off, we gotta crown it with the bun. I would say it's not normally what I'm used to, but hey, it does smell fantastic. It seems like the cheese is not gooey enough. And of course, we gotta go in for the cross section. As I cut it open, check that out. I mean, with all honesty, this is not what I'm used to. But hey, let's take our first bite. And as I did, I mean, it's a burger. I would say it's not the best burger I ever had. And if you're in a hurry and you wanna eat something quick, it's okay. I will tell you one thing you did not blow my mind, but it's doable. I would love to know your opinion on what you think of this cheeseburger. Make sure to leave the comments down below. But by far, it is not perfection like this. Now, of course, we gotta try some seafood, and for today, I chose tuna. And as everyone says, tuna is the king of all fish. And I was very lucky to get these two beautiful steaks. To be specific, we call them tuna steaks. And the color on them is just fantastic. 
Whenever you're buying tuna, friends, make sure they look like that. Now, since I have two steaks, I decided to cook two different ways. That way, we can find out which way is best to make it on the air fryer. And for the first one, I started by throwing a little bit of roasted sesame seed on my steak plate. And I definitely recommend roasted sesame seeds. Because if you remember, the air fryer does not get that hot. Then I went ahead and seasoned the tuna and started with a little bit of salt, followed by freshly ground black pepper. You want to let the salt sit for at least five minutes. As you already know, you will allow the moisture to escape, making your tuna super sticky. Because that's exactly what we need to do this step. It's perfectly coated with sesame seeds. You gotta try your best to make sure every edge is covered. But as you can see, that is almost impossible. After preheating the cast iron for 20 minutes, I added a little bit of oil and immediately followed by the tuna. And my thought is that the oil will heat up even more and give it a nice crust. Set it to 400 degrees Fahrenheit to cook for 4 minutes. To go along with our sesame tuna, I made a very simple dipping sauce. I started with low sodium soy sauce, followed by ponzu sauce, cherry vinegar, and finished it off with chili flakes, also known as kochukaru, which is a Korean spicy chili flakes. And that is your dipping sauce. As I was done with the sauce, my tuna was ready. Here's the result I got for cooking it for 4 minutes. It does look like my sesame seeds got a little bit more toasty, and I was hoping to have a nice raw center. But as I took my first slice, check that out. We got a little bit of raw, but some of them were just like medium rare, which is okay, it's not bad, but I was hoping for less. I mean, by no means is it perfect, but it's pretty good. Remember, this was done in an air fryer, and as convenient as it gets, just throw it in and do nothing. But hey, what really matters is the taste, and I wanted to give it a try without the sauce first, just to see the texture. As you can see, you can tell a little bit of the edges are overcooked. But as I took my first bite, <laughs> not bad, it is good. I mean, I wish it was less cooked in the middle, but hey, it's still good. It's something that I can have anytime, and the air fry just made it way too easy to do. I do have a feeling the dipping sauce will make it a lot better, because as you know, the edges are a little bit overcooked, this will make it nice and moist. And as I took my first bite, yes. That is good. I would say that an improvement of 200%. You definitely want to eat this with the dipping sauce. But remember, we had two. So the next one, I want to do it completely different. And I'm going to make it blackened tuna. So I started with the master of all seasoning, which is salt, followed by my rub, which talking about that, it's super easy to do. We start with black pepper, followed by garlic powder, smoked paprika, onion powder, dried thyme, and brown sugar. As you can see, it looks fantastic on this tuna. Using the heated cast iron method, I threw it in. Set my air fryer to 400 degrees Fahrenheit to cook it for 8 minutes. And once the time had elapsed, this is what I got. I mean, that does not look bad. It looks like a nice, well-cooked tuna to me. And if you've never had tuna, there's a reason why they call it tuna steak. Because just like swordfish, it does resemble a steak. And as I took my first piece out, it looks like it was cooked just right. There's a still a very little amount of pink left, which is totally okay with me. But the important thing is how is it gonna taste? And as I took my first bite, it's alright. If you ask me which one do you prefer, Guga, this one or the previous one, definitely go with the previous one. Now this one, you might have never heard of it. I know it looks like chicken nuggets, but trust me, it is not. It is something that I definitely recommend you give it a try and be open-minded. Because if you're not, you're definitely not gonna try. It's what's called sweet bread. No, we're not talking about actual bread. We're talking about this. If you are unfamiliar with sweet bread, let me explain. It's an organ meat. To be more specific, sweet bread is the organ meat for sinus, gland, and pancreas. They are mostly coming from veal or beef. And I know it doesn't look appetizing, but I'll tell you one thing, if you give it a try, you might like it. But hey, let me show you my take on it. The first thing I like to do is to brine it. That will extract any blood that it's inside. And to do that, it's pretty straightforward. Just throw in a little bit of water and salt. Whisk it well until the salt is completely dissolved. Throw in your sweet bread and let it brine overnight in your refrigerator. The very next day, take it out and pat it dry. Make sure you get the brine out as much as possible because it's quite slippery. Just like regular beef, this one comes with a silver skin. And as you know, silver skin is tough and it's gotta go. But the great thing about it is that if you grab a sharp knife, it's an easy thing to do. As you can see, by the time I was done, you can now appreciate the marbling. And there is a very good amount of it. The next step is to cut them in manageable pieces. You don't want to cook the whole thing because the brownies is what makes it taste really good. So for this specific one, I separated them in four pieces. For the seasoning, remember, there's no need to add salt. So I went in with garlic powder, followed by black pepper and smoked paprika. As always, make sure you season all sides, including the edges. Now all there's left to do is to cook them. And for that, I threw them inside of the container and set the air fryer to 400 
200 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. Push them in and let them cook. As that was happening, I made a very simple basting sauce, which includes a little bit of garlic paste and melted butter. Mix it well and it's ready for basting. Once the 10 minutes was up, this is what they look like. As you can see, they are not done yet. To make sure we get nice browning, I started with the basting. And as always, whenever you're basting it with butter, don't be shy. Make sure you throw in as much as you can. Because as we all know, butter makes everything better. Once all the basting was done, I threw them back into the air fryer at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for an additional 10 minutes and this is what I was left with. That right there is sweet bread. And I know some of you might not want to try it, but let me tell you something. Please do. Even though it's not very popular and you might never had it, you never know what something it's gonna taste if you don't give it a try. This one is definitely worth it. As I took my first slice, check that out. And even the smell, it smells incredible. And as I take my first bite, yes, exactly what I was looking for. It's amazing. It's extremely tender. Of course, it's juicy. The crispier outer edge is phenomenal. It is difficult to explain the taste, but it is something I enjoy very much. We call this molleja in Spanish. If you've never had it, I definitely recommend you giving it a try. And the air fryer did an awesome job on it. Moving on to the next one, it is Denver steak. And yes, as you can see, it is gonna be good. If you are unfamiliar with this cut, this is what it looks like. The interesting thing about this steak is that it's not popular. That's because it comes from the chuck flap tail. Some people call it underblade steak. I've heard boneless short rib. But regardless of what it is that it's called, I can tell you one thing, it is a nice steak. Now, since it comes from the chuck, the recommendation is not to cook it medium rare. As you saw, it has great marbling, so you can take higher temperature. So for this one, I recommend cooking it medium. But before cooking it, as you already know, we gotta dry brine it. That will ensure that I get a perfect crust. And as you know, I'm all about that crust. After adding salt, the next thing you wanna do is put it on a cooling rack so that it can dry brine on your refrigerator overnight. The very next day, this is what it looks like. As you already know, the salt did its job. This will ensure not only a great crust, but it's also seasoned all the way through. Now all there's left to do is to add your favorite spices. And I started with garlic powder followed by freshly ground black pepper. Always remember to season both sides, including the edges. And I really like the preheating of the cast iron as I add them in here, that. Yes, that's exactly what we're always looking for. As always, seeking for a great crust, I set it to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and set it for 12 minutes. Pushed it inside and I was hoping for the air fryer to do a great job. As it was cooking, I made a very simple basting butter. And I started off with 2 tablespoons of melted butter, followed by garlic paste. Mixed it well and your basting butter is ready. By this time, my short ribs were done. And as I removed them, check that out. It definitely needs some moisture, so it was time for the basting butter. I mean, to be honest with you, this is not the best crust I've ever seen in my life. But at the same time, it's not that bad. But as I pick it up and turn it to the cast iron side, check that out. I mean, it's not coming through the camera 100%, but that is way better. Using a cast iron inside of your air fryer will definitely give you a better crust. Now all there's left to do is to slice it open, and as I took my first slice, that is juicy. This was cooked to an internal temperature of 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And let's not forget that I gave it a 5 minute rest. For it being cooked on an air fryer, I am pretty happy with that result. But what really matters is always the taste. Everything else is secondary. And I say it looks pretty good to me. As I took my first bite, wow, that's good. I'll tell you one thing, this does not taste like a ribeye or a New York strip or a filet mignon or any other steak that I ever tasted before. It tastes like a short rib, but as a steak, it has a much more pronounced beef flavor than any other steak I've tried. If you've never had a Denver steak before, give it a try. I have a feeling that you will enjoy. Moving on to the next one, this is what I'm cooking. A squab. If you are unfamiliar with this, well, well, Welcome to the family, because I literally have no idea what it was. Since it was a present from my meat dealer, we're gonna be experiencing this together. And after of course going to Google and searching it up, turns out that this is a fancy pigeon. Yes, I said it, fancy pigeon. I mean, as you can see on my hand, it's not that big. But at the same time, I'm wondering what is it gonna taste like. And just like chicken, it comes with the innards. We have the heart, the liver, and everything else that is edible. So we're definitely gonna be cooking that up as well. From all the research I've done, USDA recommends cooking game birds to an internal temperature of 180 degrees Fahrenheit. But everywhere else says that this one should be cooked to medium rare, because the squab is certainly a special occasion bird. So I started by adding a little bit of oil to make sure my seasoning was steak. Then I seasoned it well with salt, freshly ground black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and smoked paprika. I made sure to season every single edge. For additional flavor, I'm throwing in some herbs, and I'm going with thyme and rosemary. And it's pretty straightforward, you just gotta fill up the cavity. It just looks like a miniature chicken, and hopefully it will be a tasty one. But the organs are 
I started with a little bit of garlic paste, followed by some olive oil and salt. Mix it well and my seasoning was ready. Now all there's left to do is to throw in the organs and make sure every single one of them is coated. Because of course, the last thing you want is unseasoned organs. Now all there's left to do is to add it to my air fryer to cook it up. Talking about that, I set the air fryer to 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 5 minutes. Shut it close and let the air fryer does its thing. And once the 5 minutes were up, we got some sizzling organs which looks amazing to me. There are two types of people in the world. You either love this or absolutely hate it. And I love it. Because if this tastes like chicken heart, we are in good shape. But the important thing is how is it gonna taste? And as I took my first bite, it is exactly like a chicken heart. There's no difference. And I love it. It's awesome. If you enjoy chicken heart, you will enjoy this. There is zero difference in flavor. And as I went to the next one, which I think it's the kidney, took the bite. Yep, just that as expected is exactly like chicken liver. It just tastes like chicken to me. But hey, we still have the bird. And this is what I was left with. Hopefully medium wear squab. It's funny because when you're cooking at medium rare, the skin does not get crispy. Maybe that's why they always sear it on the cast iron pan before putting it in the oven. But hey, this is an air fryer episode. We don't have the cast iron available today. So I started by carving the legs. And as you can see, oh yeah, that's medium rare. Maybe a little bit too medium rare. I mean, it's my first time experiencing it, so it's gotta be good, right? Then of course I jumped into the breast. That is medium rare. That's a fact. And as I start slicing the breast, oof, juicy, very juicy. But again, it's looking a little bit too rare for me. In case you are wondering, I cooked it to an internal temperature of 135 degrees Fahrenheit. But hey, there's only one thing left to do, and that is to give it a try and give you guys a fair review. And as I took my first bite, it is, what can I say, gamey. It doesn't have a strong flavor, it just tastes quite gamey. And by no means is this bad, but be ready for a gamey taste. That was the breast, of course I gotta go in for the dark meat. But honestly, everything looks like dark meat. And as I took my first bite from the thigh, it tastes exactly the same. Quite gamey, and I'm not quite sure if I enjoy it that much. And I'll tell you one thing, I'm not 100% convinced on the squab. So I thought maybe if I cook it more, it's gonna be better. So I threw everything back into the air fryer. Cooked it for an additional five minutes and check that out. Everything is fully cooked. I would say nice and toasty. From everywhere I read, this is exactly what they tell you not to do. But the important thing is the bite, and the very first one? No, not good. Oh, it's, it's terrible. Do not overcook your squab. It's much stronger. It's just a no. Don't do it. To finish it off, squab is not one of my favorites. That is all the meat I currently have in my house. I cook everything, everybody. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Stay safe, keep cooking. If you keep cooking, I will. See you guys in the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.